Hello and welcome. No doubt, when looking to invest in a used car, you should always get it through inspection by your reliable mechanic. However, this step still costs money. If you bring him or her a hundred cars, it's a hundred times your money. So you need to be absolutely convinced the car is worth it. In here, you'll find everything you'll need to build up a strong case file around any car. In summary, when inspecting a car, prop the exterior condition, whether it's body, paint, or tire wear. Examine the engine, might seem hard, but there's multiple easy clues, whether it's obvious engine quakes, weird noises, smells, or smoke. The interior condition is probably the easiest part there, because it's bad if it's usually mostly worn and dirty. Some clues may also reveal crash and repair cases, we'll explore them clues a little bit later. To wrap up, take it for a test drive, it's the only mean of communication for the car to express herself. And finally check the mileage, it's the moment you're most familiar with the car. In the event the deal is too good to be true, the car may happen to be stolen and cloned. There may be ways we can figure it out. We'll look into these ways a little bit later. So, six steps easier than what they look like, and here's how we tackle them. First, exterior condition. It's always good habit to be aware of the most common issues found on the car you're looking at. Here are most common issues related to the exterior as well as mechanical components. Okay, so let's start with paint job. You're looking for inconsistency in the paint job. Panels that seems to be lighter or stronger in color than the rest of the car. Usually you need the sun to be shining bright in order to reflect and for you to kind of see how the light plays on the paint. If a door or any panel has been repainted, you'll be able to notice a contrast with the rest of the car. It's almost impossible to match paint perfectly, not while trying to make money at the same time, especially when you take into consideration how the sun fades out the paint over time. Brand new paint in contrast with old body panels, there will be a difference. Next is body condition. As always, this should be the most obvious part. When you're walking around the car, look for any dings, broken parts, scratches, rust, inconsistent alignment in between the hood, panels, bumpers, and doors. Wheels and tires. First of all, make sure all four tires are the same size, make, and model. Then take a penny, insert it in between the tire tread, it will give you a rough estimation. Finally, check the rims for scratches, pothole damage, and faded paint. Behind each wheel, you'll find mechanical components. Most of the time, it's not so easy to take a look at. You'll need a very expensive $850 small accurate device your cell phone basically. Use it kind of what like I'm doing now. This tip will give you easy access to components such as front axle, ball joint, lower table, control arms, bushings, and many more mechanical components which we are never used to inspecting. Even if you're not a mechanical expert, you can still look for anything unusual if anything seems torn, broken, rusted, and if you're not sure, compare both sides. Check and see if the headlamps are becoming blurred and yellow because of the heat generated internally from the headlights and externally from the sun. Non-UV treated transparent plastic tend to slowly degrade. Keep in mind the headlights are always turned on as a safety feature while the car is running. This is why sometimes yellow blurred headlamps can give you a rough estimation on the actual mileage driven. Windows and sunroof. At this stage of the investigation, you simply want to verify that all the windows are closed tight and properly. The sunroof can unalign after a crash, so inspect it as well. Now moving on to the engine. Here are most common issues about engine and component related to the engine. Okay, so before even starting the car up, inspect the engine oil. You are looking for four things. Is there any oil? Obviously, no oil means God knows if the engine is still in good order. 
Now, does it look like oily oil? If it feels and smells like anything else but usual oil, the engine most probably have some expensive issues. The sad part is the recent engine, especially on expensive cars, are not coming with dipsticks anymore. Anyway, moving on. Is there missing any oil? If yes, it's common for all engines to lose a little bit of oil over time, so no worries, as long as it's not under the minimum mark. Finally, the dark or brighter, basically, the darker it is, the sooner it's gonna need an oil change. Apparently, it is completely normal for diesel engine oil to turn black quick. The process within the engine turns the oil black. So, no need to worry about color. The most important for diesel engine oil is when was the last oil change and how much oil is there in the engine at the moment. Next, start the engine up and listen. Ideally, a cold start is the best way for checking an engine. If it's too rough, you know it's usually packing a big load of mileage. So listen for any weird ticking sounds, odd rattle or knocking noises. Some disturbing, grinding, noisy knocking sounds, which should indicate engine failure, tend to go away when the engine is heated up or filled with additive oil meant to suppress troubling sounds. This is the part that I hate the most because most of the time when you get to the car you wanna see, sometimes for honest reasons, the salesman will have your car already preheated and warmed up. There is really not much you can do about it, except specifically ask for the car to be cold on arrival. While the engine is running, check for any oil leak under the engine bay, rear differential and if it's a 4x4, also check under the transfer case, usually located underneath the car between the front seats. Sometimes you'll find literally oil leaking on the floor, but most typically you want to make sure that everything is dry and that there is no trace of leaked oil. Let's move on the exhaust. Ask someone to rev up the engine a little bit so you can check the colored gas coming out of the exhaust. Is there any oil as well? There is three main colors that could indicate engine failure. Dark black, blue or white gray. The usual color should not be noticeable in summer and very light gray in winter. Moving on engine bay inspection. After letting the engine heat up, it is the perfect time to inspect the engine bay. So shut the car off, check and see if there is any weird smells, whether it's coolant fluid or burnt kind of smell, look for any steam or smoke all around the engine bay. Since you are in the engine bay, it's the right time to look for rusted engine components. Usually when a car is not driven for a long time, mostly because it has been into an accident waiting to be repaired. Some parts, as well as engine parts, tend to be easily exposed to water and accumulate surface rust. Either way, look around for rusted engine part as well as rusted frame and engine bay panels. Let's take a better look at underneath the car. This is kind of cheating because when you are inspecting a car on your own, outside, on the side of the road, you won't have access to a container. Nevertheless, this is your typical mechanic's eye view. Moving on interior condition. Here are most common issues related to interior as well as electrical components. In that case, there aren't that many common issues reported. Okay, so look for any interior wear mark. Less mileage means more value. When people run out of honesty, they become horrible. They decrease mileage without ever restoring life to the car, which is a major problem and is, in my opinion, why a lot of cars that we expect to be reliable appear unreliable. When you buy a used car showing 20,000 km and you are supposed to replace your transmission oil at 100,000 km, you are not aware the real, genuine mileage you bought the car is actually 120,000 km. If it's not too late, you end up replacing your transmission oil when the car really hits 200,000 km, thinking it's 100,000 km. And you know how we rate issues occurred based on mileage driven? Well, that doesn't mean anything if we keep manually rolling back the displayed mileage on the dashboard. Needless to say, we need to find clues all around that can justify the mileage. Look for any unusual wear and tear on the steering wheel, seats, and switches. Any unusual condition could be caused by excessive use, which should indicate a relatively high mileage. 
We talked earlier about clues indicating a crash and repair case. It's mainly the seat belt mixed with black mechanic kind of dirt. When a car gets into the hands of a cheap money making mechanic, you'll most probably find mechanic dirts all around the interior. Granted, it doesn't mean the car was crashed. The car might simply be in for cheap maintenance. A crash and repair case is most usually given away by the seat belts. See, seat belts are made in a specific way so they lock when the car gets into a crash and they have to be replaced but they are expensive parts to buy directly from the dealer because they usually come as a full kit because of safety measures which makes it the perfect black market item usually stolen parts this is where it gets interesting parts on the black market aren't handled with all due care and attention once they have been removed from stolen cars they are basically thrown away waiting for customers meanwhile those parts accumulate dirt, rust and all kind of nasty stuff the weird part is that nobody bothers cleaning them up. That is the best explanation I was able to come up with after witnessing numerous recent cars with seat belts in terrible state. In this case, the seat belts are crystal clean. All good. Now, all windows and sunroof. Make sure all windows are working properly. Open them up and close them down. Don't forget to check if windshield wipers show any malfunction. You really don't want to find out the hard way in the middle of the highway when it's pouring rain. Now is the time to take it for a test drive. I would suggest to drive it in city roads until it heats up and then take it on the highway. Make sure the radio is turned off and ask the salesman to remain quiet so you can focus on the car. After going through that smart chart thoroughly, you really should begin to have an idea on the actual mileage of the car so check it out at the very end of your investigation. If the shown number makes you uncomfortable, walk away or try and get the best deal as fairly as possible. Also don't forget to check and see if there is any cluster lights indicating needed maintenance. Cloned cars are usually kept within the same country they have been stolen in. Very bad people will manually replace the vehicle identification number of a stolen car with those of another genuine clean titled one. Here is the first location of the VIN number and here is the second one. All cars of any make, year and model should have these two identification numbers. The problem is bad people have managed ways to take off those V numbers and glue some other fake ones. They look real, but they're fake. Therefore, the stolen car is now holding the identity of another car which probably someone somewhere is owning. Basically, cloning car this way means there will be two or more cars on the road with the same vehicle identification number. Some recent cars, however, are now coming with at least one third location of the VIN number. Each manufacturer will have it stamped proofed somewhere on the frame or at least sticker printed somewhere else around the car, either in a booth or in the engine bay. Check them out before signing anything or paying any deposit, especially if you feel the deal is way too good to be true. I'll thank you for watching and if you find this helpful, please share it with your friends or anyone you know is looking to buy a used car. We really need to reach everyone all around the world. Yes, we do. Let's make sure no one ever gets scammed because they didn't know any better. And I hope you enjoyed. Whether you're looking to buy or to be entertained by nice car footage, I suggest you subscribe and scroll through the channel. There are many things which discusses many cars. Thank you, take care, and goodbye.